we speak unto us. We dip ourselves into your precious blood. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, have we prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord once again for an opportunity to come uh, your way with this message or this program. I believe that today's one is also going to be exceptional. Today's one is also going to be one which is backed by the Spirit of the Almighty God. Last week, it was much more of a personal discussion with our sister concerning her upbringing, uh, growing up as a child and everything, certain things that she went through. Sister Philly, the Lord has through you written certain books and then the lord in these books has messages for us i believe yes please by his grace so without wasting much time we would like to go into the books that the lord has uh written through you the message in the books for us please uh i'll be doing translation for the benefit of us who do not understand the english language so please as you go out i'll do the uh, translation into the Ghanaian dialect Okay, please. God richly bless you for this wonderful opportunity. Amen. Um, please, I would like us to humbly look at the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 11. Revelation, chapter 13, verse 11. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Amen. Amen. Beloved, the time of our salvation is nearer. That was Romans chapter 13, verse, verse 11. Roman and Yemu Bako. When the Lord, by his grace, started revealing himself to me. Last week, by God's grace, we had spoken about how it all began. The message that he gave to me through our dear sister Sabrina. So after that day, that day being the 20th day of November 2010, the next day was a Sunday. So we went to church. Sorry. And when we got there, you do. Sorry, hold on. I remember that day we went to Bonfi in Guinea Conakry. And during worship time, now, oh, sorry, by God's grace, the Lord opened my eyes. And I saw a very large clock on the wall. And it was indicating a minute to 12. A minute to 12. Beloved, and after seeing this, the Lord said these words on to me by his grace that my children why have you forsaken me get out of the dark if not the darkest hour is almost here if not the darkest time is almost here it is left with one minute more I can't bear the sin of man any longer repent repent my children, my children change. For one minute is not any long time. Hell is beyond any human knowledge. Human knowledge is not any good knowledge. Hell is not any good place. Change, change. My children, why have you forsaken me? Get out of the darkness. Beloved, the Lord is speaking to you and I. Now is the time that we ought to leave the darkness. The darkness of our sinful life. Let us not continue to forsake the Lord. My 
for he is coming very soon after receiving this message and this vision by God's grace I had shared it with my parents and this drove us with a certain fear to continue to seek the Lord more because we knew that the Lord is coming soon and the very next day being the 22nd day of November the Lord by his grace revealed himself to me again in the first vision that day he showed me a certain man standing on a hill he was holding a, a smooth but crooked staff and he was, as he was standing on the hill, many people were below the hill. And he started to say, He lifted his hand and shouted. He lifted the staff and said, The repent for the kingdom of God is near. And when when he said this, no, Kasa, no. beloved, the sad thing was that many people, those down the hill, they began to laugh. They all began to laugh. Beloved, the Lord is speaking to you and I. Will we also mock the Lord? Will we turn a deaf ear to his words? Behold, he is coming soon. That very day he went on to give me these words. By his grace he told me to share these words with everyone. That, he, that I am coming sooner than you think. Time is up. Beloved, the time is up. The Lord gave this message ten over ten about ten years ago. But then that, that does not change how imminent his coming is. It is now even nearer than it was then. Let us not think that the Lord has kept long. According to Second Peter chapter three verse eight and nine, the Lord says in His word that, but brethren, I would not have you that you be ignorant concerning this one thing. For one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. And the Lord is not not slack concerning his promises. But he is long suffering to us word. Not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. Beloved, the Lord is crying out. And I see for emphasis sake. About three weeks after receiving this message. The Lord by his grace once again re revealed himself to me. He showed me in a vision another clock indicating the lateness of the hour. And it indicated a second to the coming of the Lord. But beloved, and you could see the men the people of old like father Abraham and and Kov, um, the prophet Moses the ancient people that they were all seated there in heaven where the clock was waiting they are all 
door waiting for you and I. And I saw that a certain door was opening. And that the bride was being ushered in. The door was being opened for the bride to enter. But beloved, the question is. Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? How am I ready for the coming of the so Lord? If the trumpet of the Lord is to sound, will you be found ready? Will I be found ready? So the question is that what is one minute and what is one second in relation to heaven's time? The trumpet of the Lord can sound at any moment, beloved. It can sound this very second. But would the Lord find us sleeping or slumbering? Will he find us asleep? Or he will meet us ready for him? It is my prayer that you and I will be ready for his coming. It is my prayer that you and I will be ready I will be prepared. Amen. For the word of the Lord says, according to Matthew chapter 24. The verse 36 says, No one knows about that day. Or I. Not even the angels in heaven. But the Father only. Are we prepared? Prepared for the coming so, of the yeah, Lord. Yeah, the verse 37 says that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Beloved, the Lord has been sounding his warnings. Everything in the sky, in the air, everything on the earth, everything around us points to that fact. But are we prepared? May the Lord have mercy on us. Even as the Lord by his grace gave me these messages. As we continue to seek his face. He continued to reveal more and to give more messages by his infinite mercy. So one day the Lord said to me. That I am coming soon. The world will crash with the sea drying up. Fishes dying and animals disappearing more than earthquake clashes the earth will burst with fire you will have no shelter I would care for those who love me now when I would me dear Beloved, so many terrible things are ahead of us. Many have befallen us. And even greater are those ahead. But the Lord said that I will only care for those who love me. So beloved, do you love the Lord? Have you given your life to the Lord? Beloved, stay tuned. We are going for a quick break. When we come back, the message is going to continue. Thank you, beloved, for staying tuned. You're welcome back to HSM TV, and you're watching Revelation Hour. We've been talking to our sister, and the Lord through her has been giving us a message. So we'd like to quickly go back to her for her to continue the message that the Lord has for her. Sister, please, over to you. God bless you. 
See, so after the Lord, by His grace, gave that message that He will care for only those that love Him. Some days after, by His grace, He gave another message that before I come, the Lord said, before I come, there will be a great storm. Nobody knows what kind of storm it will be. I am a mighty God and can do anything at any time. Just take my words and let them be your advisor. Take it or else you will face your own storm. I repeat, no one knows when the storm will will come or how it will be like. The Lord said, I tell you, I will not inform anyone how it will be like for my word is permanent. And the Lord went further to say, There will be a storm all over the world. But I will not explain how. My children are disobedient to my word. They have forsaken me. I will not talk but just punish. I just give my words and whether they take it or not, I am coming. Time is up. Time is really up. You heard that I was coming long ago. But now I am coming soon. I tell you the truth. No one can tell when. My sons and daughters, I am coming sooner. Time is up. I love you all, but you have forsaken me. Why? Why have you done so, my children? Remember, time is up. Dearly beloved in the Lord, since the Lord by His grace gave these words, many other storms that have been coming have been happening. So many things have we been seeing. Signs in the sky. Signs on the earth. Babies being born only bringing the message that the Lord is coming soon and later passing away. Even this pandemic that we are seeing in our world today. All of these things are a storm that is happening. They are all storms. And the Lord said he is coming soon. But then do we truly love the Lord? Are we truly showing that we love the Lord in our dressing, in our behavior, and in all that we do? So for behold the time is up the Lord by his grace later on he gave me a certain message he told me that some people claim to be pastors elders deacons and dignesses but yet they do not worship me well they just call themselves Christians but they are not worthy of my name they are just church goers they, do, they are just church goers worship me in truth and in holiness many think others think that just because they are pastors friends they can go to heaven they cannot. Do not be yoked with unbelievers. Unbelievers 
because you are not my children. You are not my children because you do not know me. Pastors, elders, deacons, dignesses and dear people. I am coming sooner than you think. I love you. Je t'aime, je t'aime. Yeshua. Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Beloved. Please, if you are a pastor, so your software, an elder, we are sorry, penny. Even a pastor's wife, uh, so for my me. a deacon or a deaconess. So for bar, so for bema. The Lord is saying that He is coming soon. Let us remember that He is no respecter of persons. On that day, He is not going to look at anyone's title. On that day, He is not going to look at anyone stating Him. Or position in the church. But He is going to count how righteous and how holy we are before Him. The Lord, by His grace, also gave me these words. That why can't people love me one bit? I need one hundred percent of your heart, not twenty percent or any other percentage. Most people love me twenty percent. Do not worship me lukewarmly. Worship me wholeheartedly. I love you, but why have you forsaken me? Beloved, the Lord is not looking for 20%, not even 99.9% of our love. He wants wants us to love him with all that we have. And he told me that child be a person who cannot move without me. Beloved, please let us love the Lord with our whole heart. The Lord has loved us with his whole heart. He came to die for us on the cross of Calvary. Once I was watching the passion of the Christ, I cried a lot. But beloved, one thing is that when the Lord by his grace revealed to me in a dream how he was crucified, beloved, it was even worse than that which was depicted in that movie. He has done all of this for us. Will we not also love him in return? Please let us love this great God. For he has loved us unconditionally. He said he is coming soon. He said he is about to move his foot to pick his bride. But beloved, are we a part of that number? And the Lord by his grace showed me three roads one day. And he showed me that one of those paths was leading to him in heaven. Now, mommy, who says, I quite on about co exchange, so I and I acquire quite a course right here, my name. And the two other roads led to hellfire. And I'm you know, I can echo Eugenium. And one on one of those roads, I saw the cartoon characters, the Barbies, the evil cartoon characters that then I used to love and watch so much. They were on that road, and the Lord told me, Choose a road, but but then by his grace i chose the path that led to him na kwa ba ko so mi hu se na cartoon eh eh cartoon and cra toys characters ba bi ni de keka ho ya ho mo ne no na o mo so enam sa kwa ba ko so na we de ka cho mi se mi nyi kwa ba ko amen fa so na na dom so nti ni mi yi kwa ya e de call no christ yesu and he gave me a white garment to put on no mama at the fitter at the shade beloved the roads are before us and for akwani nyina e wo yanim only 
one road leads to eternal life. And that is through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he is coming soon. Let us choose him. May the Lord help us all. Beloved, let us choose Jesus Christ before it is too late. He is the only way, the truth, and the life. He says, no one comes to the Father except by him. You want to go to the Father. No one wants to perish. No one wants to go to hellfire. But how many of us are willing to ply that path? How many of us are willing to follow that way of the Lord? How many of us are willing to do the, 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 the will of the Father? May the Lord have mercy. Sister, before we bring today's session to a close, I have a few questions for you. You know, the Lord, per the revelation of the Lord, the Lord uh, made us understand that uh, the Lord revealed to you that he was on a hill reaching out to us, crying out to us to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. But then people were laughing. How, how in, in what ways do we make mockery of the words of the Lord? In which ways do we make mockery of the grace that the Lord has uh, made us, uh, given to us at, uh, at our disposal? What, what kind of things do we do that point to the fact that we are making a mockery of the grace of the Lord or the, with the words of the Lord that the Lord is reaching out to us with? Okay, please. Please, when you look at our world today, one thing people will usually say, some people will say, if you tell them about the coming of the Lord is that if um, they would say so many horrible things that if the Lord were to be, some would say if the Lord were to even be sitting on the track, he would have arrived by now. They will say so many hideous things. Some people will say that. How can the Lord come and destroy this world which he has created so beautifully like this? How can the uh, Lord destroy this world? All of these are ways that uh, in which people mock the Lord. And if we continue to sin against the Lord, the Bible has made us understand according to Hebrews chapter 10, Verse 26 following, that if we sin willfully after coming to have the knowledge of this truth, that we crucify the Son of God again and put him to an open shame. If we continue to live in sin, if every day we'll sin and come and ask for forgiveness, tomorrow do the same thing, continue in that lifestyle. Through all these ways, we are mocking the Lord. Mm -hmm. I mean, beside your sister's a quiet bay and so near fast so a tree tree a radi and I say, eh, ye dear radi home for no matter, say, yes, sir, my yaka, ye mubi or honor my to make a busu sem be a mem person a bosso and put a word, you made ye so, and sem my yaka and sem fata, and a bium a braba yabo a yaboni, a bribian yaboni and that, ye sign a tree tree, Christy, yes, ye sign up when I send you a mubium, if you are wood, ye me, you are falling into a sin and then you are finding it difficult to come back to the Lord. This is the time you need to make a decision. This is the time you need to make up your mind before it is too late. Last question before uh, we go, please. If that is the case, how do we prepare? How do we stay as people who are ready? You know, if we have repented, if we have decided to repent and then we have decided to stay on the way of the Lord, how do we stay prepared? How do we stay as people who are ready so that when the Lord is to come, we wouldn't find ourselves wanting? Please, the word of the Lord, according to the book of Revelation, has made us understand that the bride on that day when at the marriage supper of the Lamb, the bride that will be there will, will be spotless, without any wrinkle, holy in the sight of the Lord. We ought to continue to wash our garments day in and day out in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to continue to live a life that is pleasing in His sight. When you look at the Romans chapter 13, the Bible says here at the verse 12 following that the night is far spent the day is at hand let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light let us walk honestly as in the day not in rioting and drunkenness not in chambering and wantonness not in strife and envying put ye but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the 
the last thereof. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh and the last thereof. Beloved, this is the word of the Lord that is coming unto us. Say, Pesia Yanko for a brain, a brain, Nayaya Cradua. I was here, ye who numb you, my eton chain. Now, for ye for Christo Yesu, ye nanti over Christo Yesu crying so. Now, a brebian yesre Christo Yesu mojan, ye for your home and no mojanum. Now, a boni biara away a hono. Dahane da, which me at to your home, nay to me as a fata. If you are listening to me, uh, maybe. You are you, you you could be a pastor, maybe you could be an evangelist, maybe you could be a worker in a vineyard of the Lord. But then at this point, you realize that there are so many things that are not right in in your life. Maybe you you are someone who has just heard the word the word of the Lord for the first time. You want to give your life to the Lord Jesus. Uh, you want to rededicate your life to the Lord Jesus. Please say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for I know that you are Lord and you are God, O oh Lord. For my sins, you came to die. For my justification, you resurrected. I accept you into my life. I dedicate my life unto you once again. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. With you, will I like to journey through this life. You alone will I serve all the remaining days of my life. So help me, God. Amen. Say, we be born to end our sorry, yeah. And a day, Miss Sons, or may I may ready, or may I my Jim Quan. Me quan na can you now, or no good to an amassumno, or no good to an amen and a benante, in tea era de boame. So what can say, same year, me did you say, what came every woman about quam when you Christ to you to a bit too animal for four. Don't let this saying be a routine. When you have said this, begin to journey with the Lord in a new direction altogether. And I believe that you are going to be blessed and you'll be prepared even as the coming of the Lord is so imminent. You have been watching Revelation Hour. If you have any questions, you can contact the numbers on your screen. If you have any further uh, thing, any you want to journey with the Lord, you want to work with the Lord in a new direction, contact the numbers on your screen. And I believe that uh, we will be willing to attend to you and then the Lord through this will help us so that we we'll all prepare for the coming of the Lord. You have been watching this program. Don't let it go away. Inform a brother or a sister to also watch with you. And I believe that you're going to be blessed. I have been Pastor Prince Crunchy and I've been talking to Sister Philippa Patricia Crunchy. Same time next week, I'll come your way. May the Lord continue to be with you till we meet again. Bye bye. <laughs>